Listen up. This is Slick Rick here to tell you how to get the greatest wrestling video ever made. I'm talking about the very best versus the very best all on one hot video cassette. Woo! Check this out. This is it, Daddy. The Great American Bash. You won't see it on TV ever. It's just too hot. Nine matches and two explosive hours from the 86 tour. Imagine the awesome chain match between Ivan and Nikita Koloff and the Road Warriors. The Boogie Woogie Man versus Shasta Watley and Paul Jones in the most bizarre and twisted haircutting match ever. And yes, the Rock and Roll Express versus the Andersons. Plus, Ron Garvin versus Tully Blanchard. Ooh, and Baby Doll looking so fine, finally gets her hands on that wimp, Jim Cornette. And yes, folks, the main event, yours truly, Ooh, Slick Rick styling and profiling against Dusty Rhodes for the big one, the World Heavyweight Championship. Who won? Who lost? My lips are sealed. If you want to find out, get ready to order this great video cassette now. The match beyond ignites into explosive wrestling action. The war games have begun. Welcome to the Bash 87. You have a better than ringside seat at wrestling history in the making. Ten men, two rings wrapped in steel, and only one way out. War Games 1 and the rematch, War Games 2. Precious Paul Ellery, the Road Warriors, Dusty Rhodes and Nikita Kola versus the Four Horsemen and J.J. Dillon in a dangerous new kind of wrestling. Plus, Nikita Kola versus Lex Luger, Ric Flair's title defense against Jimmy Garvin, Dr. Death, Steve Williams, Michael Hayes and the Freebirds, the Rock and Roll Express, Barry Windham, Big Bubba Rogers and the Midnight Express. Two hours of the best never seen on television before. The War Games on VHS or beta video cassette. Nowhere else in America can you see wrestling action this explosive. Ladies and gentlemen, from the studios in Mooresville, North Carolina, it's the Binge Buster Show. Starring me, Tony Binge, and my guest this week, Jeff Patton. Hello everyone and welcome to a new edition of the Binge Buster Show. Coming to you from the studios here in Mooresville, North Carolina. This is our July the 4th edition and I thought what better way to celebrate the 4th of July than to talk about what I, in my opinion, the greatest wrestling event of all time, the Great American Bash. Um, during the Jim Crockett promotion era, um, they had um, three different years of Great American Bashes, 85, 86, and 87. And tonight, with my special guest, Jeff Patton, um, who used to be a, a promoter, and, um, and uh, he's one of the guys that got me started in the wrestling business, um, I thought he and I share um, a lot of the same uh, likes and uh, opinions and i thought that to you know to, to do this podcast um he would be the perfect guest um that way he and i both can uh, can discuss the bashes and uh tell you people who it or which bash was my favorite um and what made it my favorite uh, all that and much more coming up next on the binge buster show hello everyone and welcome to this n new edition of the binge buster show I am here with my guest, gorgeous Jeff Patton, former promoter for Burke County Wrestling, and uh, we're going to be talking about our favorite Great American Bashes and years and all that stuff, but uh, without any further ado, how are you doing, Mr. Jeff? I'm doing fine, Tony. How about yourself? Man, I'm doing good. It's been a while since I since I saw you. Yeah, it has been a while. I've just been really busy. You know how it goes. Oh, I understand. I know uh, with, with our personal lives, we always... Uh, you know, we, we we get really busy with our kids and our jobs, but uh, but it's, it's always nice to always catch up with you. Same here. Well, uh, the podcast tonight or today, since uh, it is the Fourth of July, I thought uh, the the best um, one of, one of the subjects I like to talk about was uh, the Jim Crockett Promotions um, and Dusty Rhodes's idea of a really cool um, summer um, attraction called the Great American Bash. Uh, the very first one was held um, on July the 4th, 
1985, I believe, um, and it was held at the Charlotte Memorial Stadium. It drew like 30,000 30, people uh, with the main event being Ric Flair versus uh, Nikita Koloff. And as you know, around 85, um, having, a, having a Russian versus an American uh, was, was a huge draw because, we, you know, at the time during the 80s, uh, we, you know, we had our issues with uh, with with Russia, um, so that was definitely a box office draw for Jim Crockett Promotions. What do you think? Oh, most definitely, and uh, of course, the the build up for the match in itself was uh, tremendous, especially the the build up with the uh, special guest referee uh, Tony. You probably remember what happened there. <laughs> yeah, David Crockett. I mean that 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 was so cool, and you know. Looking back, even as a kid, you know, I I I kind of kind of got the business, but I thought it was so cool because if you look back when David Crockett and Tony Schiavone would commentate, um, Tony Schiavone was like right down the middle. David Crockett was like you could tell he was popping for the baby faces, and 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 almost to the point where you you didn't know if he really knew it was a work, <laughs> you know. Yeah, most definitely, and uh, he paid the price for it one time. Uh, we were told you remember what happened with uh, Nikita and Ivan. Uh, the David Crockett was interviewing them, and uh, the build up for David Crockett to be involved in their match, of course, you remember, uh, um, you know, David was running his mouth back to Ivan, and uh. Uh, Nikita had had enough of it and he turned around I mean, anybody that has never seen this I'm telling you go to YouTube or wherever and look it up and watch it I mean it very devastating uh, even as a kid I was like man I, I mean I, I thought it was legit I mean I really did and it probably was but uh, right uh, man Nikita just hauled off and just Russian sickled clothesline whatever you want to call it uh, David Crockett and right on the concrete floor and uh it, it was an awesome awesome uh angle to build up for the great american bash yeah and and i, I i'm looking back now uh, at my notes um i was actually wrong it was actually july the 6th 1985 at the american legion memorial stadium in downtown charlotte um but but you know at that time 80 uh, july of 85 uh, Jim Crockett Promotions was really starting to take off. Like the, the territory hadn't really popped yet, but it but it was close. Um, I know during that time, probably one of the most popular wrestlers uh, in Jim Crockett Promotions. Uh, there was two of them, in my opinion. One was Jimmy Boogie Woogie Man Valiant, and the other Magnum TA. I mean, Magnum was red hot during this time. Yes. And, and, and I think and, if yeah he was yeah he was U.S. champion I think and he defended against Kamala exactly yeah I was about to say and, and and during that time they they were building up how how devastating his belly to belly was that he could get it on everybody on anybody um, and of course for him to get it on that three hundred and seventy pound or whatever Kamala um, it, you know the match if you look back at the match now uh, the match wasn't all that but when he gave Kamala the belly to belly the the, the stadium went nuts. Yeah, and of course the other match was the cage match between uh, Dusty Rose and Tully Blanchard. Um, Tully was the the world television champion. I think that that wasn't that the yes. uh, deal where yeah, yeah baby doll yeah baby doll uh, if uh, if Dusty was the win um, he'd get baby doll for thirty days the ba- services of baby doll yeah he got days. baby doll for thirty days and the TV title. Um, and, uh, and it was in the cage and, and, and incidentally, um, Ric Flair versus Nikita Koloff was the, um, for, for the world title, but was not the main event on that card. Yeah. It was Dusty and Tully. Yeah. Um, but I remember, um, after the great American bash and, uh, they, uh, started, uh, you know, shooting these angles on television. Um, I, I was actually watching this the other night because now the WWE network has actually, um, has has uploaded a whole lot of um mid Atlantic wrestling from like eighty four I'm I'm sorry, eighty five through eighty six and there was a scene in there, uh, I'm sure you remember this, but Dusty's trying to make a woman out of baby doll and he takes her to Nelson Royal's farm. I mean I mean his his, his little ranch. Um and and it's right here in Mooresville. As a matter of fact this ranch is about two miles from my house. I drive by it every day but um but they Dusty took 
baby doll out there and had her shovel in the stalls. Um, and then I thought this was, was really cool. She comes out there and says, well, you know, now that uh, I've been working hard, you know, you think I can ride this horse? And Dusty's making fun of her and said, oh, she can't even get up on the horse. And he says, well, if, if you can put a saddle on this horse, we'll let you ride it. And so Nelson and Dusty didn't think the baby doll knew what she was doing. But all along, she was smart. And, of course, uh, she got on the horse and, you know, made a couple laps around the around the, 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 the stall there. And then all of a sudden, she just took off on the horse and was gone. Um, and then, of course, on TV, you know, Dusty and, and Nelson are going nuts. And you're telling her, bring, bring the horse back, bring the horse back. And then a couple weeks later on TV, um, Dusty, she shows back up. And Dusty finds out that he's, that, that she took his credit card and charged this trip to, um, to Hawaii. Hey, do you remember when she showed up? No. Didn't, didn't she show up and help Tully beat? Uh, oh, that's beat, right. Uh, yes, that's the, right. The U.S. title. That's right. That's right. Yeah, she was not supposed to be, you know, involved with Tully Blanchard because that was still in the thirty days, and she shows up dressed as a security guard. That's right. And hands Tully a foreign object or something, and Tully hits Magnum and wins the U.S. heavyweight title. That's right. I forgot about that, yeah. and and that was that was a really cool angle. Uh, in itself, I mean, it was it was so cool how how they went from Dusty to Magnum, and it's like totally totally losing the TV title and Baby Doll was was like no big deal because he got a step closer to the world title because he got the United States title. Yep, and yeah, going back to that bash, one of the coolest things I I can still remember from that bash was Ric Flair's entrance. Oh yes, the stadium. He's mm-hmm. Coming in a helicopter. Yeah, that was really cool. Yeah, and not not just a helicopter, but the Charlotte Red, uh, television show or television station Channel Nine, uh, WSOC, yeah. which that that station still still operating today. Um, yeah, I thought that was really cool. They even rolled out the red carpet for him too. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, yeah. An, another another match on that show um, that that I think stands out um, was at the time. Um, you know, uh, Crusher Khrushchev and uh, Ivan Koloff, um, they got a, a, a match against the, the Road Warriors. And at the time, the Road Warriors had just came in. As a matter of fact, um, it was title versus title because it was Crusher Khrushchev and Ivan Koloff were the NWA World Tag Team Champions, and the Road Warriors were the AWA Tag Team Champions. Of course, the match ended in a double DQ, but um, but that, that was the first time that we saw the Road Warriors uh, coming into um, to the um, NWA and um and of course they they really got over at that point too oh yeah yeah and uh so so start so um great american bash 85 um was was like the very first one um and they only done one and it was right there in charlotte right there in the hometown of crockett promotions um and it drew like i said about thirty thousand people um which which was which was pretty good back in that day, you know, to to to, to you know to draw that many people to a pro wrestling match, you know, here in the Carolinas. Um, so that right there was was like a, um, uh, a kind of a hint as to how big Jim Crockett Promotions was actually going to get. Yes, and uh, didn't they have a concert with David Allen Coe? Um, that wasn't until 1986, I believe. I, I think, okay. yeah, yeah. It seems like um, I believe um, uh, Waylon Jennings uh, played at the one at the 1985 one, but in 1986, okay. yeah, 1986, they brought in David Allen Coe. Yeah, and and okay. then and then the the uh, the uh, new thing that they done in '86, and 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 as we're talking about these bashes, I uh, just want to let everyone know my favorite bash. Uh, was 1986 because it seems like that was a year that everything took off. But the Great American Bash meant something. It was a, it was like because it was like a tour, and that's and that's how they talked about it on television. It was, it's it's a tour. Um, it's it's the biggest thing happening in the summer. Um, if you miss it, you're gonna miss it all. And there there were so many feuds going on on TV at the time, um, and all those feuds were actually showcased at all the bashes. Um, there was actually 13 bashes. Um, in 1986 and but but the cool thing about i thought about the star kid 86 was they went on tv and said okay rick flair is the nwa world heavyweight champion and he is going to defend his belt at every single bash against the top wrestlers in the nwa and i thought that was really good because that that was showing everyone just how good rick flair is because he's you know he's 
he, he believes himself so much that he signed a contract to defend his belt at every bash. Yep. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I can't remember who all. I know Rogue Warrior Hawk was one of them. Yeah. Um, he yeah. lost the belt. He lost, yeah, he lost the belt in Greensboro to Dusty Rhodes. Right, yeah. In the um, cage, is that yeah, correct? Yeah. Yes, uh, the, 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 it, um, it, it was on um, July the 26th in Greensboro, North Carolina. Um, the very last night of the bash was actually August the 2nd in Atlanta at Atlanta's Fulton County Stadium. But suppo- but on TV they, they talked about, you know, Dusty, uh, because I think I think the, the original deal was uh, he was defending the belt against Dusty in Greensboro and Atlanta, but Dusty beating forward in Greensboro, like like so so they played up on TV that Ric Flair was able to hold on the belt all the, the for the whole bash, except for next to the last one he lost it to Dusty. Um, but but looking back um, at that, and and I've I've heard rumors that supposedly during the um, uh, Great American Bash they were he was going to drop the belt to Ricky Morton, but Ricky didn't want to break up the rock and roll express so they put the belt on dusty instead they would actually i mean no offense to ricky morton but uh you know uh, they, they were actually considering putting the world title around ricky morton that that is the story i've heard because ricky morton was so popular um that rick yeah. flair rick flair believed that that ricky could carry it you know but but then ricky says i don't want to do that um because i i don't want to leave robert behind i want to stay with the rock and roll express <clears throat> And so, well, and I know they, yeah, they had the big few going too. Yeah, that that they yeah. started. With both mm-hmm. of them, yeah, that's what I'm about to say. Like during that whole bash, um, each week, Rick Rick Flair started a little feud. But but during that summer, his hottest feud, it wasn't with Dusty. It was it was it was with Ricky Morton. And and I believe you know the you know the rumor I heard, I believe it's true because if you look back, um, Rick Rick, Rick Flair drew so much heat with Ricky Morton during during the bashes, it it, it would only make sense for him to to lose it to, to Ricky Morton because a, um, you know, before the bash has started, he, um, you know, he comes out on national television, making fun of the rock express about, about them having, you know, the little teeny boppers and Ric Flair's got the girls with the full sweaters. And then that's the, that's the, that's the angle they shot where, um, <clears throat> where, uh, Ric Flair put a training bra on Ricky Morton, Ricky slapped him and they beat up, you know, Rick, Rick, Ricky Morton beat him up in the TBS studios then that Saturday night, I was at this show. It was in Greensboro. They done an eight man uh, elimination match: uh, Rock and Express, Dusty, and Magnum against the Four Horsemen. The last two in the ring was Ric Flair and Ricky Morton. Ricky Morton pins Ric Flair, goes to the locker room. The Horsemen go to the locker room. They jump him. They rub his face in the concrete. Then uh, so now his face is all messed up. Then another night of the bat. Then the bash has started. Then they end up breaking Ricky Morton's nose. So the whole the whole I mean. They they didn't say anything much about Ric Flair and Dusty Rose. It was all Ric Flair, Ricky Morton. So, to me, I think that that makes sense that um, that uh, they were actually headed in that direction of putting the belt on Ricky Morton. Yeah. And then um, yeah, that's that. yeah, and and that and that was good. And 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 like like you said, they 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 had David Allen Coe um, doing concerts and. Um, and I actually saw a video the other day where uh, he had uh, Dusty Magnum and um, Baby Doll and Rock and Roll Express up on the stage with him singing his his hit song uh, during that time too, uh, which I thought was kind of neat. Yeah, uh, some of the other uh, things going on was um, Baby Doll had joined up with uh, Dusty and uh, Magnum. And they had started a feud with the uh, Midnight Express and Jim Cornette, who were the world tag team champions at the time. It was right. uh, Loverboy Dennis and Beautiful Bobby. And I remember the angle where um, they came in as the James boys wearing the mask and um, uh, came out there one week and jumped, uh, took Cornette back in the, uh, out of the uh, arena where they were and uh, tried to tie him to the back of a truck and was going to drag him through the parking lot. And, of course, the Midnight Express showed up in time to to, uh, to untie uh, Cornette. But, uh, and then, of course, they had, like, some six-man and woman uh, uh, matches inside Steel Cage uh, during the bashes in yeah. 86. Yeah, yeah, um, I was about to touch on that because um, it was always Cornette and um, – 
and uh, the Midnight Express. And what I thought was so cool about it, because Cornette was like, he was so good at getting heat. But I remember him coming out there wearing those um, <clears throat> Jordan, because back in 80, 85, 86, those Michael Jordan um, shoes were really, had just came out, and it's really popular, the black, white, and red ones. Um, and uh, well, I, I guess I guess they're they're called Jordan 1s, if people out there that like Michael Jordan shoes. But anyway, he's wearing those, and he's wearing this, this complete um, full-body wrestling gimmick and he's got the tights and the long and the long shirt but he's got pads that go like elbows and knee pads that go that go that went from his wrist up to his all the way up his muscles and on his knees he had knee pads that went from his knees all the way down to his ankles um it's like he's fully padded and it was so cool i thought that was like he was ready to you know he had, he had all the pads and he was ready to you know protect himself but like you said each bash they 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 Baby Doll team was somebody different. It was either Rockland Express, Dusty and Magnum, the Road Warriors, um, which which I thought was really cool. So it made it look like that, that Baby Doll, you know, w- w- was bringing everybody uh, after them. And of course, she went over every bash, you know, with the same the same finish. You know, she punched uh, the cornet out, and knocked him out. But but man, they uh, they uh, drew so much money with that angle. Yep. They sure did, and of course, the other feud I remember was for the uh, U.S. heavyweight title, um, Nikita Koloff and Magnum T.A. in a best of seven uh, yes. series for that title as well. Yep, and that that was really good. I, I really enjoyed that. I, I thought that was a really cool way to um, to move the belt to um, to Nikita, and of course, if it hadn't have been for Magnum's tragic car accident, the original plan was Nikita's taking the U.S. title, but then Starcade '86, it was supposed to be in Ric Flair and um, and um, Magnum TA, and Magnum was gonna was was gonna go over and become the world champion. Uh, unfortunately, uh, due to circumstances beyond uh, Magnum's control from the car accident, um, that wasn't able to uh, to happen. But could you imagine? I mean, you think think back, Jeff, how popular Magnum TA was. And oh, it's just like that. Yeah, Dusty said he was he was he would have been Hulk Hogan. I mean, you know, Hulk yeah. Hogan was mm-hmm. the most popular guy back in the eighties in wrestling. And I mean Magnum would have been bigger than Hogan. Because oh. not only was Magnum popular, he could wrestle, unlike Hogan. Right. You know, Hogan was popular but he couldn't wrestle. Right. Uh but Magnum had the complete package. I mean, he was um uh, he was the definitely the 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 biggest star back in the right before he had his car accident. Yeah, you know a lot. You know after um, I guess in around eighty seven when they brought in uh, Lex Luger, uh, they called him the total package. But I argue with that with every sure Luger had probably the best body in wrestling. I give him that. But let me tell you something. I don't think anybody was ever over um, the way the way um, Magnum T.A. was. I mean, Magnum was just, he was white hot. He wasn't red hot. He was white hot. I mean, as soon as he came yep. on the scene, I mean, uh, as a matter of fact, I, you know, I, I, it, th- this is my claim to fame, okay? So in 1984, when um, when Magnum T.A. won the uh, United States title from uh, Wahoo McDaniels, he done it on my birthday. <laughs> so I was like, you know, he, you know, right, right there in Charlotte, it happened on March 23rd, 1974. Uh, 1984, and uh, I was like, "Yeah, my my my, my, new, my new favorite wrestler, Magnum TA, uh, just won the belt on my birthday." Um, and uh, and I'll never forget uh, as long as I live. I said that was so cool. Uh, but you know, before Magnum came in, you know, my favorite wrestler was Jimmy Valiant, which now is a good friend of mine. And uh, but I'll tell you a cool story about Magnum TA. I was on a show one time, um, and uh, of course, you know, everybody watches on. If you remember. <clears throat> Dusty Rhodes, Magnum T.A., Barry Windham, they all had those fancy cowboy boots that they wore to the ring. Well, um, so, so I'm, I'm talking to Boogie one day, and I'm like, now Boogie, and Boogie had a pair of them. And I'm like, where'd you get them boots at? Because I want a pair like that. And he goes, oh, I can't remember, but if I remember, I'll let you know. Okay, a couple of days go by, you know, me and Boogie hanging out, and we're eating breakfast one morning. He says, he looks at me and goes, Austin Hall. And I'm like, what? He says, Austin Hall Boot Company, that's where I got those boots at. And I'm like, oh, I guess, but brother, I guess they're probably out of business now. He said, I bought these boots 25 years ago. I'm like, well, I'm going to find out. So um, back then, there wasn't the internet. So I, I get on, I asked him, I said, well, where are they located? He goes, well, they're in Austin, Texas. I'm like, okay. So I just do the, the 411 on the telephone, and I'm like, you know, 
is there an Austin Hall boot company in, in El Paso or Austin, Texas? They said, no, they're actually in El Paso. I'm like, okay, perfect. Can I get the number? Give me the number. I call them. Sure enough, they're still in business. So I ordered me a pair of these boots, right? And uh, took half my life savings to buy them because they were pretty expensive. But I, I always wanted them ever since I was ever since I was a kid. And I first saw Magnum TA wearing them. And um, so anyway, I get these boots. And uh, I had them a couple years. And um, so I'm on the show with Magnum TA and He's in the back. He's out out back talking to some guys. A lot, a lot of the workers are like, you know, just talking to him. It's Magnum TA. I walk up and I got the boots on. And I walk up and he goes, oh, my gosh. And I'm like, what? And he goes, you're wearing Austin Hall boots. And I said, oh, yeah. He goes, let me see them. So I pull up my pants leg and let him look at the boots. He says, those are the most badass boots I've ever seen in my life. He said, those look better than the ones I, that I had. And uh, he said, he said, I never would have thought to do black and white. He said, that is a really cool uh, color scheme that you picked. And I said, well, I didn't really pick them. I said, they, they actually made them wrong. I said, but he goes, no, he goes, I like the way they're made. He said, that he said, brother, those boots are beautiful. And I thought that was kind of cool that Madam T.A. is popping from my boots. And I, and I got them because I liked his. You know, it's kind of funny. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Uh and of course, you know, not changing the subject from Adam T.A., but uh, the other feud that was really hot back in that, you know, in 86 that they had during the bashes was uh, Paul Jones and Jimmy Valiant. Yes. You, know, uh, you were talking about, about Jimmy Valiant. And, uh, you know, Shaska Watley uh, had turned, he was Pistol Pez Watley, and turned on, on Jimmy Valiant. And then um, supposedly, um, they had a hair versus hair match and uh, Shaska lost. So mm-hmm. they got to shave his head. And then later on in the bash, uh, Paul Jones went against uh, Boogie. And uh, of course, uh, Paul Jones, with the help of uh, Shaska, I believe was the no. one that came in. And, yeah. Uh, yes, Shaska. Mm-hmm. Was it Shaska that came in and, yes. and hit him with a chair or hit him with something. I yeah. Hit him with the exactly chair. What. Yep. Hit him with the chair. Yeah. Um, because the gimmick was Paul Jones had always had that loaded glove. He, 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 you know, he'd always give, give his guys a loaded glove. Well, um, at the, at the great American bash in Greensboro on July 26th, um, it's, you know, th- this is, this is a final match. It's boogie, it's boogie against Paul Jones and, and boogie's going to take his hair. Right. And then, um, so what happens is Shaska, uh, you know, uh, like all, uh, like like Paul Jones and Army guys, they, they they start coming to ring. Baron Von Rasky comes in the ring, and so Raging Bull um, comes out to help Boogie. And so while the referee is over there, uh, Boogie sees Paul Jones going into his tights. Well, Boogie get, gets his gimmick and he gets his glove out, and he hits Paul Jones, knocks him out, covers him. One, two, three. Um, but while he's waiting for the referee to come over, who's who's uh, t- who's, who's <clears throat> excuse me, who's over there with um, with the with the bull and, and uh, Baron, uh, Shaska sneaks in, hits Boogie in the back head with a chair. One, two, three. And what was cool was was how Boogie, um, you know, he he kept his word, you know, kept his word, and still you know let, let him shave his head right there in the ring. And Sandy Scott uh, was actually the one that that shaved his head there. Mm-hmm. And I, I just remember the crowd uh, chanting BS. I won't say the words, but yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I, uh, I was yeah. actually at that Great American Bash, and I was like, cause you know, I was always a big boogie mark, and I was just like, no, that ain't right, that ain't right. Best man. And uh, I remember saying the same thing, the BS. And um, of course, at the time, I think I was thirteen years old. And I look at my dad's like, you better watch your mouth. <laughs> I was like, okay, sorry, dad. You know, but I, but I was, I was so mad. I was like, man. That, but but again, they 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 knew what they were doing. I mean, I, I still to this because day believe. Yeah, the Great American Coffee. Bash '86, I believe, was in my opinion was the best bash because there were so many feuds going on um, at the time, and all the feuds were red hot. And at the time, you you know, the Jim Carter Promotions, in my opinion, was 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 the best organization going on TV at the time. I mean, they had everybody. They had Dusty Magnum, Rock and Roll, Four Horsemen, Jimmy Valiant. I mean. You know, other than I can't think of any any other wrestlers that were that were really popping uh, back then uh, that wasn't in Jim Crockett Promotions, except for maybe uh, Randy Savage and um, and Hulk Hogan. But you know, but but that that was a whole different type of wrestling compared to Jim Crockett Promotions 
which all these all these views and all these angles were were so believable because you had a guy cutting somebody's hair, um, you, you you had the Tate Fist match with Tully and and Ron Garvin, um, you had um, you know the feud with Baby Doll. I mean, it, it that, that was like, like some of the best views on TV ever in wrestling. And, yeah, and you know it because uh, you know Tony, you know us being involved in wrestling as long as we have and being able to work with you know some of those guys that we grew up watching and you get with some of the heels and they always have a story to tell you about how they got jumped you know leaving a show or going to a show or later on that night or or by fans right yeah I i mean how many of them have told you stories I've heard countless stories of of heels back in those days that, I mean, yeah, they were definitely, uh, uh, you know, they were definitely uh, knew how to, knew how to uh, make it believable to the fans. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that, you know, the, the great American bash 86 was just, a, it was such a great event. Um, and like I said, I, you know, what, what I think made it big, was 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 how all the fuse were just so believable and so real and 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 you believed it. I mean, you know, I was 13, 14 years old, but I believed what I was seeing on television because the, all those guys done their job so well. Um and then so much stuff came came out, you know, it started at the bash and kind of brewed all the way into 1980, you know, in, until the end of 86 because um during that year also was uh, when the Rock Express was they, they were really hot. And they started the Rockland Express fan club, and Ricky Morton done the record, and um, and uh, you get the life size poster. And yes, I was a member of the Rockland Express fan club. Okay, but uh, but uh, <laughs> but I mean, it, it was such a. I mean, man, that, that that was that was like a golden era for me. That's like part of my childhood that I will never forget because the the wrestling was so good. I mean, you know, I, we, we we talked about this on on the on the first podcast you and I had done, but. You know, wrestling had a hold of me since I was about eight or nine years old, and uh, it never let go. And it was kind of like a drug for me. You know, I um, sometimes I love it, and sometimes I hate it. But at the end of the day, um, it, it's it's been it's been my life. You know, and and it's because of these of this era of wrestling, eighty five, eighty six, eighty seven. Um, to me, that, that was the best time in wrestling ever. I mean, I know in the nineties you had the Monday Night Wars, and that was good, but but real wrestling, blood, guts, and, and realism, that was Jim Crockett Promotions. Most definitely. And talking about blood and guts, I mean, if you want to go to 87, uh, Dusty comes up with the war games. <laughs> yes, I was about to go to that. Um, that was, a, and, and again, an, another, uh, you know, they, they, they kind of stayed true with the Great American Badge Tour um, but you know, they, they, they were pushing that, that, the, that the main one was, in, was in Atlanta, uh, <clears throat> which was for the, uh, which is what you talked about, the war games, the match beyond Ric Flair, uh, and the full horseman versus dusty, uh, Nikita and the road warriors. Yep. Uh, they had the first one. Was the first one in Greensboro? No, the uh, the very first uh, War Games was on July the fourth, nineteen eighty seven, in Atlanta to Omni. Okay, Atlanta. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and then of course the last one was in uh, uh, Miami. Yeah, and and around mm-hmm. and, 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 and and the thing about this this great this um, Great American Bash, this was eighty seven. Um, you're you're starting to see a little turn. Um, of Jim of Jim Crockett or Jim Crockett Promotions, um, at this time uh, Jim Crockett had just bought out the uh, the UWF, um, and it, and it shows because if you look at at the matches on this card, other than um, seeing the um, the Full Horseman against Dusty and and uh, Nikita and the Road Warriors, um, not uh, there was a lot of guys on that you know it's it kind of fifty fifty, but um, you had Kendall Windham. Which he, which he was in uh, Jim Carter Promotions, and he, he, he wrestled the Gladiator number one. Then you had Sting, who just came from the UWF, and he wrestled Thunderfoot number one. Um, then Lasertron, which Hector Guerrero, he wrestled Mo- Mod Squad Spike. 
Um, and then Jimmy Valiant wrestled Mod Squad Basher. Now, on that one, I don't understand why they didn't make that a tag team match. I mean, that's what I would have done, Lasertron and Boogie against the Mod Squad, but they made it two single matches. Um, then here's where the UWF comes into play. So Barry Windham uh, was the uh, Western States Heritage Champion, and he defended the belt against Rick Steiner. Um, and then uh, Ron and Jimmy Garvin uh, uh, wrestled Vlad- Vladimir Pietrov and the Barbarian with Paul Jones. Um, but now here's where the UWF really comes into play. They uh, had a UWF, a whole UWF match, UWF tag team title match. Their Lightning Express, Tim Horner and Brad Armstrong against the Angel of Death and Big Bubba Rogers with Skandar Akbar. Um, Chris Adams against Black Bart. Um, the Fabulous Freebirds, Michael, Buddy, and, and Terry against um, Ivan Koloff, Manny Fernandez, and Paul Jones. Uh, then we go back to NWA. Rockmo Express with the NWA World Tag Team Champions against the Midnight Express, Bobby and Stan with Jim Cornette. That match was a DQ. Then we had uh, Dr. Death, Steve Williams, and he had Magnum TA in his corner against uh, Dick Murdoch uh, with Eddie Gilbert, and that was a Texas death match. And then it took us to the main event, the War Games, uh, Dusty and uh, Nikita and the Road Warriors against the Full Horsemen. And that was actually the match where... For the finish, the Road Warriors broke, uh, l- l- you know, they actually broke J.J. Um, uh, Dillon's uh, shoulder, or they they, they, they uh, dislocated it. If, and if you go back and watch the match when when they they're do, they're doing the uh, close on off the top, um, and when they when they come down, J.J. Uh, because the cage has a roof on it, uh, I, I don't think they were thinking at the time. And when they when he took the bump, he came, came right down on his shoulder and dislocate his shoulder and therefore he wasn't able to perform in the great american or i'm sorry in the war games too if you remember they uh, put a hood on big bubba rogers and called him the uh, the war machine yep yeah i remember that one but looking back 80, 87 is is when you started in my opinion i think uh you started kind of seeing a decline um in the um not really a decline but but it, it changed from 86 to 87. It seems like, um, you know, the, those huge wasn't as hot then as they were in 86. What do you think, Jeff? Oh, I totally agree. And I think too, that, uh, um, Crockett started, um, Crockett started, um, buying out all these territories and which, yeah. And the way, the way he did the UWF, I thought really was not right. Um, but you know what, Tony, I think the decline of Crockett era happened when Magnum TA was in his car wreck. You yeah. ever notice that? It yeah. Started I to agree go with down you. Mm-hmm. It was really hot. And then Starcade 86 just didn't have the flair that Starcade 85 did. I mean, it just no. didn't. Although that, that, I like the Skywalkers. Uh, the the whole deal with that, I thought that was really good. It's just Starcade '86 just wasn't nearly as. I mean, yeah, I don't think it was half as good as '85. No, and, and just you can just tell. And even the bash, the bashing, uh, you know, '87 wasn't as good as Bash '86 or no. '85. And and the bad thing, Jeff, if if you remember, um, during the '87 bashes. You you didn't have to go buy a ticket to see the Great American Bash because they they taped them for television. So each week, the Great American Bash was actually their TV show. Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, which which I thought was like, man, they're you know what are they doing? Um, so so they but but I think their idea was during that time they was working a lot doing the bashes. So they didn't really have time to do the TV shows and that. So they, they just kind of like, or it could have been their way of saying, okay, here's the bashes. Now, you people need to buy tickets to come see it because, you know, this is what it's going to be. Um, and and I remember uh, watching the bash from Charlotte uh, on television. I didn't go I didn't go into 87, but, um, but, um, but I remember watching it on television, and it was just like, you know, it just wasn't like – so like they had the free birds, uh, Michael Hayes and Buddy Roberts against Bobby and Stan for the United States Tag Team titles. Um, now, one, one story I forgot to tell you 
um, and I, I think I think you I, I know you're gonna laugh at this because you and I had talked about this before, but I actually got the word from the man uh, directly. So you remember back in um, Star Care, I'm sorry, Great American Bash '86 when they when they would have their the show there in Charlotte. Um, the dressing rooms were really far from the ring. So what they would do is they would, they had these guys on these golf carts that would that would drive their wrestlers to the ring. Well, Boogie being Boogie, uh, he's like I, he's like I'm mess with this with this guy. So you know Boogie's always dancing. So he's driving the golf cart out to the you know to the to the ring. When he gets there, he stands up and starts dancing on on the golf cart, and the golf cart's just bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. And Boogie said he he would stay there all night until the guy got off the cart because he wanted to. He wanted to see how long the guy could stay on the cart before he bounced him off. <laughs> and I remember correctly, the guy finally got off the golf cart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and when I asked Boogie about that, that's why he told me he's like, yeah, he goes, I was ribbing the guy, brother. He said he said he was a great guy. He said I was he says was driving down. I was trying to talk to the guy, and the guy wasn't talking back. So I thought, okay, I'll fix him. He said, so he said, so once he pulled up, you know, he pulled up, you know, right there at ringside and the wrestlers would get off the golf cart and go to the ring. He said, I just stood up on the golf cart on the backside and started just dancing, jumping up and down. He said, that golf cart was going to bounce. He said, one, two things going to happen. He said, the springs were going to fall off for that, or I was going to fall off. He said, but instead, the, he said, the, he said, instead the driver got up and he said, okay, I, I won that one. But I, but I thought that was funny how Boogie likes to, you know, Boogie is, if you don't know him, he's, he's a funny dude. And like, like he ribs you and you, and you don't even know you're being ribbed, you know, like, like, like some guys can know, okay, oh yeah, he's ribbing me. But with Boogie, you never know. Kind of like the time you remember, uh, whenever you and I, uh, went up to his hotel room and I was going to talk to him about our match. And, uh, uh, that, that one wrestler came with us and Boogie says, Hey brother, do you smoke? And he goes, uh, yeah, he goes, I can tell. He was, he was, he was, and he was ribbing him on his teeth, but the guy didn't even pick up on that. But you and I did. I thought it was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that man. Man, he's so funny. We were at a, um, I'll tell you another funny boogie story too. We were at a restaurant and uh, this waitress comes up and she starts talking. She's marking out for him. Oh, you're boogie. I've known you since I was a little kid, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, she said, um, she says, um, how do you stay so lean and trim? She goes, she goes, uh, I've been trying to diet and I can't lose weight. He said, oh, baby, he said, he said, get on a diet. He goes, you can eat anything you want. And she said, no, I can't. Every time I eat something, I always gain weight. He goes, well, don't swallow it. And I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> Just the way he said it, you know, he's like, well, don't swallow it. And she's like, yeah. And then I can see her walk away like, what in the heck did he just say? <laughs> it was just so funny. But that, that, that's just how he is. I mean, I'll, He's a great guy. Yeah. I could tell boogie stories all night long, but um, but getting back to our bashes. So, um, unfortunately, 87 was probably the last um, Great American Bash series uh, that was that was under Jim Crockett Promotions. Um, and they actually, um, uh, let's see, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm actually looking it up here to see. Uh, about um, the Great American Bash '88, and I remember going to that one, Jeff. I went to that one. Um, the 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 uh, attendance was so down that they were selling tickets in the balcony in the Greensboro Coliseum for five bucks. Oh wow! Five bucks, and they only had. Did they have? They didn't go on tour in '88, did they? They just did yeah, the one. No, actually, they they did. But at that time, they had okay. just started doing pay-per-view. So they done the uh, pay-per-view one from the Baltimore Coliseum. And that was the one where um, Ron Garvin turned heel on Dusty Rhodes. Oh, yeah, and they did the Tower of Doom. Yes, yes. Yeah, okay, yes. But, but, yeah. Uh, but, but, but to kind of give you an idea of how business was down then, when I went to the Greensboro, or when I went to the Bash in 88 in the Greensboro Coliseum, they gave us the main event for so many pay-per-views already. Um, on, on that card, Jeff, we got we got the War Games and we got the Skywalkers match all on the same card. That's oh, how. Wow. And we got it for five bucks. <laughs> um, and uh, <laughs> but it was so crazy. But but I remember um, on that card it was the Full Horseman, and by this time Lex Luger was a member of the Horseman, and it was Luger. Tully 
Arn and Flair. And they were against uh, Dusty Rhodes, uh, Nikita Koloff. Um, let's see, Dusty, Nikita. I want to say Barry Windham. And um, um, Dr. Dead Steve Williams. Um, that that was the uh, that was the war games, um, and originally it was supposed to be on this card. It was supposed to be the Powers of Pain versus the Road Warriors on the on the Skywalker match. And if you remember, uh, in '88, uh, that's when the Powers of Pain done the bench, bench the bench press contest with the Road Warriors. They shot that angle, got and, and got that angle off and going. And of course, the the, the way that the Road Warriors were going to get their revenge was it was going to be. Skywalker's match during all the Great American Bashes. Well, a week before the bash in Greensboro, uh, that's when uh, Barbarian and Warlord went to WWF. So, um, so yeah. they took off. And I remember being on some shows with Barbarian, and I told him, I said, "Man, I said I was I was so mad at you when I was a kid." He said, "What do you mean?" And uh, you know, actually, he says like, it's, "What you mean, brother?" And I said, um, "I said, well, Barb, I said, um, I said I uh, we went to Greensboro to see." You guys against the Road Warriors, I said. Then you, and then it wasn't you guys; it was the uh, Russian assassins instead. He goes, "Oh, brother," he said. Dusty and Crockett were so mad at us. He's like, uh, "They built up these bashes." He said. Then we we gave our notice and went to WWF, and uh, he said we just killed. The he's like, he's like, Dusty was like, "You just killed everything we built up for the last two months," and he's like, "Yeah, we're gonna work for we're, we're gonna we're gonna go work for Vince." He said, because we saw what was happening. He said, we knew that that ship was about to sink. He said, and I was so glad that we did that. He said, because it wasn't long after that they um, sold out to uh, to Ted Turner. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, the Great American Bash 87 was, uh, I mean, it, 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 it has some good stuff, but unfortunately um, it didn't live up to uh, 86, I don't think. And, I, and, that, and that's why I say, I, I, that's why I, to my my opinion, I believe Stargate eighty six was the best. Uh, I'm sorry, Great American Bash eighty six was the best uh, bash um, that that they had. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Now, um, I want to change the subject a little bit. Even though um, you know this this show was based on uh, Jim Crockett Promotions and the Great American Bash, but I but I want to talk a little bit about Burt County wrestling. Um, and uh, during that summer that that we done. Our version of the Great American Bash, which was the Stars and Stripes Bash, um, I, I think that that was a really, really cool, and really fun time. Even though at that time I was still kind of green and didn't know everything, um, that that was still a, a fun, uh, a fun summer uh, for all those matches and, and uh, shows that uh, that uh, you that, that that you put on for us. Yeah, um, and that was actually after we had changed our name to New World Wrestling. Right, exactly. Uh, we changed over, and uh, we did, uh, let's see, we did uh, two shows. It was like a six-week span from the last weekend in June to the first weekend in uh, August mm-hmm. of 19, uh, let me think, 94. 94, yes. Um yeah, the first show was on, uh, I can't believe I remember this date, June 25th, uh, 94 at uh, Drexel uh, Community Center, which is now R.O. Huffman Center. Mm-hmm. And then we ended at your hometown in, at the time in Thomasville uh, at the Armory. And I think you you, uh, you booked that show for me. For yes. Us, mm-hmm. um, there at the, at the National Guard Armory. And uh, I think it was August the 6th. I believe that was, and it was on a Saturday. That was our last yep. show uh, during the bashes. And um, between then, let's see, we, we did two shows at we, Amvets. Yeah, we uh, July, done, and was, we were in was Hickory. Another show. At Hickory. Hickory, yeah, the yep. Neil, Neil Cart Gym. That was and the I'll one. I'll tell you even cooler one. I'll tell you even cooler one, Tony, not to cut you off, but no. I actually had a show booked. At the Lenore Ryan uh, College in Hickory at their uh, gym, gymnasium. Oh, oh, nice. And it was just, yeah, it was just, I think it was, I ended up canceling it because uh, we didn't draw too well at Drexel and I lost so much money at Drexel mm-hmm. and I just didn't have the money to, because I didn't know how I was going to draw at the, you know, at Lenore Ryan, and uh, I think it was the rent was more expensive than Drex. So, and I was just afraid I was going to really lose my butt. Even though the lady, when I canceled, said, "Well, I hate that. 
a lot of the kids that go to school here were looking forward to you guys coming in and doing the wrestling here. And I was like, uh, you know, I felt bad. And I thought, what would have happened if we'd have done that show anyway? Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. It would have been and good. If we would have done that, yeah, we would have done a show every weekend. You know, we did Amvet's post on Sunday afternoons. Mm-hmm. If we would have done, if I would have kept that show booked, we would have done a, a wrestling show either Saturday or Sunday for six weeks in a row. Oh, wow. Yeah, that, that would have been cool. I remember, um, uh, you, you're going to hate me for this story, but uh, I remember we were doing the, um, uh, you you were you were doing the angle for the mint uh, for the uh, ghost rider and um yeah. and we we were doing the uh, lightning strikes match there which which to you fans at home a lightning strikes match is uh one guy's tied to a bull rope another guy's tied to a chain tag team um and so it was you and i against uh I'm trying to remember was it donnie and tony no no it was uh sweet daddy brown yes sweet daddy and, brown and the professor and, um, and professor yeah 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 that's yeah. right and uh and of course the finish of the match was um i, I was supposed to come off the rope and um and and uh, one of the guys were supposed to move and i was gonna hit you with the bell one two three and i remember when i came off the the rope i jumped up a little too high and i tatered the crap out of you with that with that with that uh, with the cowbell and I remember when I hit you, I said, because at the time, you know, you and I, we, we, we were just le- kind of kind of uh, learning each other. And I remember laying there uh, going, he's going to kill me. I just know he's going to kill me in a second. Because because I know at that time, you know, you're supposed to turn on me uh, and turn me baby face. But, uh, but I, I was, I was because when I hit you with that bell, you said, what in the world? And you went down and I said, uh, I said, Jeff, that was stiff, wasn't it? And you didn't answer me. And I said, oh, he's pissed. <laughs> and I said, he's fixing to pile drive me through this freaking ring, man. I know he is. But I didn't. Man, that was that was probably the sweetest pile drive I've ever done. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was nice. Um, and uh, yeah. I loved it. But that, 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 was, that was such a fun time back then, man. It was like, you know, yeah. it was just great. I just loved it. Yeah, the the cool part is is the very first lightning strikes match, and I was the one that came up with the match was uh, held in Burke County Wrestling about a year before that, and we used the exact same finish, and I turned all it was myself and my partner at the time was Magnificent Marshall, and we were the BCW Tag Team Champions, uh-huh. and we lost the belts to uh, Tenacious Tony and Dangerous Donnie, Big Donnie. And um, we lost the belts back to them. We had won about a month before that, beat them for the titles. And then we lost them to – and the exact same finish, uh, Marshall um, – I had Tony, and Marshall came off the second rope to hit him with the cowbell. Tony ducked. Marshall hit me, and I turned on Marshall too. So we did the <laughs> exact same <laughs> – That's great. The exact same thing uh, – and, that, and guess what? I pile drive him too. So there you go. See, <laughs> it works. Yeah, you know, you, you know, and that, and that, and that 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 kind of takes me off to uh, to to like like some of my favorite finishes of matches, and uh, one of my favorite. I've done it so much to the point where all the guys were like, "Dude, quit doing the same finish," but but it got such a great reaction. Okay, so I'm gonna set this up for people at home. So say Jeff and I are. Or or um or a tag team and working somebody else whatever, uh the referee gets bumped referee get, referee goes down, the uh, I, I, I actually I'll tell it the way I did it one time, so I'm I'm working Jimmy Valiant and uh, Jimmy's got me in a sleeper hole you know I'm fighting off fighting off and I sidestep him turn it into a side headlock and I push Boogie into the referee boom referee goes down, um Boogie Boogie's ever checking on the referee. Oh, I'm sorry. Boogie covers me. One, two, three. Uh, nothing. No referee. So he gets up and goes to check the referee. I go on my tights. I get the brass knuckles. I put them on. I lay back down like I'm hurt. Boogie comes over, picks me up. Boom, I knock him out. Referee comes up. One, two, three. Everybody's, oh, man, Tony just beat Jimmy Valiant. They're going, people's going crazy. They're throwing stuff in the ring. Um, then the baby face comes out. Tells the referee, he's got something in his tights. And he, Referee's like, what are you talking about? 
And then all of a sudden the referee, you know, raises up my arm, nothing there, checks my tights, nothing there. And then he raises my other arm, and that's where the gimmick's at. It falls down, and referee's like, what? And I'm like, what? where'd that come from? Arm referee, and while I'm doing that, Jimmy Vatt comes up behind me, rolls me up, one, two, three, and the place goes crazy. I love that finish. I've done that finish a million times. To me, that finish never gets old. It's simple, it's easy, but it gets a, it gets some really good heat, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so going back to those bashes, um, we did two. We did uh, – we, we brought in a, a TV championship in New World Wrestling. That's what we were doing at the time. Uh-huh. And um, um, we did a battle royal at each – um, bash and supposedly all the winners were supposed to be in the match in uh, Thomasville at the final one mm-hmm. for uh, it was going to be like a uh, Royal Rumble type battle royal where we drew numbers out um, for the TV title. Of course, it ended up being all the guys were in that battle royal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but um, anyway, um, uh, that was how we did that. And of course, um, we remember. Um, that was where we did um, the final match between the Ghost Rider and you, and you put your career on the line, and the Ghost Rider put his mask on the line. Uh, we had started to feud myself and you uh, after we did the um, between the Ghost Rider and Terrific Tony. Uh, we started that feud there, um, and the whole time too, I was uh, commissioner. Right, yeah. I was yeah. I was out. Yeah, I had uh, I had fractured a bone in my right foot uh, mm-hmm. in March of that year and it was just starting to heal to where I felt like I could get back in the ring and it, I wanted to keep doing wrestling shows and be involved too, so I decided well I'll be commissioner and here I was taking on a new role. I was being a baby face which the fans weren't used to. I was always the heel and always mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the the most hated heel in Burke County Wrestling. Here I am, you know, and I did some things that got over with the fans and fans started believing, hey, you know, this guy's turned the leaf and the whole time I'm under the mask of the Ghost Rider, I come back and, of course, uh, we had the match in Thomasville, your hometown, and you ended up uh, taking the mask off and revealing who I was and then you covered me and got the pin. Uh huh. Yeah that 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 was a fun then, match too. And actually, Jeff, yeah, that, that was the first night I got color too. Yeah. Yep. Because I remember, yeah, I remember a, that a lot of my family were there, and I didn't tell them that uh that that, that there might be blood in the match. And then when when you when you took that cowbell and rubbed it across my head, and then I did the I did the gimmick, um, blood started to come, and they were like. I remember looking over and seeing like four or five of my family members actually walk out of the building because they, they, because I guess the blood was starting to come. And so they, they uh, thought I was going to bleed you know, really good, but um, I don't, I don't think I bled that. I didn't bleed that much. I mean, I, I did bleed pretty good, but um, not like I wanted. I wanted to, I wanted to have a uh, Barry Wyndham at Starcade 893 or um, yeah, Starcade, not, not Starcade 93 um, wrestle one of those pay reviews. I can't remember now what it was, but, where Barry Wyndham wrestled Arn Anderson, it was like a bloodbath. I was kind of hoping for that, yeah. but but of course I didn't. I didn't get that much blood, but but it still looked, it still looked pretty good, you know. And um, of course, I forgot that was a bull rope match too. Yeah, it was a bull rope yeah, match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and if you remember, yeah. uh, the on, on mine the the strap broke. I had to hold it the whole time, <laughs> which was funny. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm holding it one hand, you know, trying to get my get my get my gimmick with the other, but uh, but man, it was so funny. But it was a great match, and then and the finish that you came up with was really cool too. You know, um, the baby face is like t- trying to you know untie your mask, and you cut me off, and then um, you know you shoot me in for a and you bend over for a backdrop, and I just stop and grab your grab the hood and pull the hood off, and you just covered your face and laid down. And I just covered you one two three and had the mask in one hand and people in the building going crazy the other side. And, um, that was fun. And, 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 and I'll, I'll tell you another funny inside story about this, about that show. And you probably remember this, but, and at the time, uh, my high school girlfriend and I had been together through the whole high school. Um, and then, um, we ended up breaking up and, uh, she never came to any of my wrestling matches when I was training and coming up there with you. But now I'm, I'm up at wrestling in Thomasville and she's gonna show up with her new boyfriend. Remember that? 
and uh, yeah. and I was a baby. I was a baby face. I'm like Jeff, you gotta let me turn heel tonight. Like, Brother, you can't do that. But, yeah, I got to, man. My stupid ex girlfriend's out there with a boyfriend. I gotta say something, you know. And of course, I, you know, some of the guys would walk by him and give him five, and you know, and I, I did say a little something, but um, but it, 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 I thought that was kind of funny, you know. She she still had to come out there and check out, check me out, see what I was up to. But um, anyway, that was fun. And then uh, and then from there, um, what was what was some of the other big matches on that card? It was um the the the, uh, the uh, NWW World Title was on the line that night too, right? Wasn't wasn't Donnie the who 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 was NWW mm-hmm. champion then? I uh, believe it was uh, Gentleman James. Um, no, I think that was, no, I think that we didn't have a world champion at the time. I remember, as I was commissioner, and two, I was starting to do some questionable things as a commissioner, and That's I right. did it with James. Um, um, he and another wrestler got into an altercation uh, during our TV taping, and I went up to try to break them up, and James reared back to pop the guy with a you know with a punch and when he did he elbowed me and knocked me down that's and right so i ended up stripping james with the title that's right yeah i stripped that's james right. with the title and that i mean it was kind of controversial and mm-hmm. it kind of was leading up to me turning back uh but you know the coolest part of that whole deal was uh my brother tony and i had a falling out and he wanted to come back um, so I told him, I said, look, I said, I got a perfect way for you to come back. I said, I'm going to put you as the ghost rider and I want you to come in at the time we were about the same size and I want you going to come in and jump Tony, uh, you know, you terrific Tony mm-hmm. and, uh, try to choke him out. And then I'm going to come out as commissioner and break it up and, uh, you know, give you a couple punches and you just leave. And uh, That's so right. I remember we that. did that, and then the people went were like they didn't know what to think because I think everybody had finally realized, okay, Jeff's the Ghost Rider deal. Uh-huh. We think he's, and yeah, we threw that curveball and even fooled um, Tony's wife at the time. Oh, nice. We didn't even know it. Yeah, but she knew Tony was there. She knew her husband was there because they came, you know, rode together, mm-hmm. but. She said, I swear I thought that was you. I didn't think that was my husband. So we fooled her, you know, into thinking that so, I so, was under the So at that point, you know, if she bought it, the, the people bought it too. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, that was really cool. And then Tony came back. and um, But, yeah, it, it everything went over. And I think um, um, Mad Dog, uh, David Lynch, and the Crucifer – uh, ended up uh, being the and there was another uh, angle I did as a commissioner where when we were at Hickory at the Neil Clark gym where um, Donnie and the professor uh, now known as lower boy Jay were the tag team champions and the professor had wrestled in the lightning strikes match so I made it like okay there's a stipulation in the contracts for the bashes that if you wrestle uh, you're not allowed to wrestle but one match. Uh, you know, you can be in the Battle Royal, but you can't wrestle but one other match on the show. And so he ended up, uh, the contract was signed between to defend the tag team titles against Mad Dog, David Lynch, and the Crucifer. So Donnie had to fight Mad Dog and David Lynch and the Crucifer by himself. And oh, yeah. he ended up losing. And so they ended up winning the tag team titles. That's right. And again, that was again me being starting to turn, even though I was commissioner and doing mm-hmm. questionable things. And uh, yeah, that went over pretty well too. So yeah, yeah, that was some great stuff, man. Those, if 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 I could just go back in a time machine and go back and know what I know now and, and be back then, my gosh, those shows could be. I mean, they were great shows, but they 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 would have been so much better now because we've all just we you know we we we've all progressed, you know. Yeah, we've. Uh, I'd like to be that young and in that good of shape. <laughs> yeah, you and me but both. Yet, yet, yet have the knowledge I have now. You know, because things would have been a whole lot different. But uh, yeah, uh, those were uh, those were some great shows. Um, and uh, man, just to 
think back at all those uh, great matches. I, I I think we even had a um, um, goodness, we had a we had some deal where um, there was a, a battle royal for money, and um, ended up the two guys went over at the same time. The last two left, and uh, it was uh, Donnie and the Crucifer. And uh, yep. ended up doing a uh, match where the winner gets the money, and of course Donnie ended up winning. Uh, but again, I mean, just some cool little angles that you know I come up with, or somebody come up with, and we always did. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll argue with uh, with anybody. Um, on, you know, on the independent scene, um, you you got to give the people something to think about, and you got to give them something to want. Uh, you know, you can go out there and have great matches all day long, but if you don't have some kind of angle running, um, then how in the world are you, are you on, do you expect them to come back, you know, next month or next week um, if you don't give them some reason to want to come back, you know? Exactly. Exactly. It's, it's all about, you know, you're, you're writing a book or doing a movie. Uh, you know, that's what, uh, you know, the guy that trained us, you know, John Sullivan. Uh-huh. John Queen, that's what he told us all those years ago. He said, man, he said, you don't go in there and do move and move and move and move. He said, bottom line, he said, you got to tell the fans a story. Yeah. Match has to tell a story. Your feud has to tell a story. Yeah. And and if you, uh, and, and going back to these great American bashes, that's exactly what um, they, they were doing in 86. You know, every match on the great American bash was telling a story. Uh, it was, it was, it was showing you, the altercation um, between uh, the combatants, you know, you know the the problem between Ricky Morton and Ric Flair, uh, Baby Doll and Jim Cornette, Rick, Jimmy Valiant and Paul Jones. Um, it gave the people a reason to want to come back. And the thing about it was, was the things they were doing was so simple. Um, you know, I, I live I live by a thing: less is more. You know, I, I, you know, I'm on these independent shows now, and I see these guys. You know, they're in the back, and they're going over these 45 minute matches in the dressing room and when they get up out 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 you know out in front of the people they forget everything they talked about and you know yeah. less is more the less you do the more the people are going to buy into what you what to what you're trying to show them you know um it, it kind of goes back to um johnny valentine uh he, you know, he had this quote that says um i can't make people believe wrestling's real but i can make them believe i'm real and that's and that's and if more wrestlers would would take that um approach um, I believe that that the wrestling business would would actually get better than what it is. Totally agree with you. Totally agree with you. Good stuff. Well, Jeff, I appreciate you coming on my show again, man. It was always a pleasure talking to you. And uh, of course, you and I could talk about Jim Crockett Promotions and BCW all night long because that was like the you know I was telling the people before I brought you on the air. Uh, one of the, my main reason to bring you on was um you and i have so much in common we have this almost the same beliefs in pro wrestling um and i just thought it would be great with this being a special uh fourth of july fifth uh, fourth of july edition uh to talk about the greatest um wrestling matches that took place around the fourth of july yeah and of course it's a special day for me too that's right it's your birthday (laughs) happy birthday to you brother yeah well thank you appreciate it (laughs) Just another year I get older, I guess. Is yeah. About the way I look at it when I you get my age, so. Yeah. Well, well, I, I know you're 25, so um, so uh, you know we we only got a little bit more you know to go there, but uh, but no, nah, man, it's it's it it a great time, and uh, and I've told you this before, and I'll tell you again, I really thank you for everything you've done for me over the years, and giving me a start when nobody else would, and um, you know, without you, I don't know what I I don't know where I would I I, I probably wouldn't never be able to live to live out my dream in wrestling and. Um, I can never thank you for that, and I really appreciate that. Oh, you're very welcome. And like I've always said, man, you you always like a brother, and we've probably, without a doubt, one of the best tag team partners ever had, man. So, yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, um, and, and 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 that's like a whole, another whole thing is like, um, you know, you and I could be a tag team and work a match, and we don't talk to each other much in the match because because we we, we just look at each other and know okay. Okay, I know where Jeff's going with that, or I know where Tommy's going with that. Uh, anyway, it goes back to that match that you and I had a, a couple of years ago uh, when you came back. 
um, it was you and I against Donnie and um, and James, and um, and man, it was like it, it was like uh, it was like nineteen ninety four all over again, you know. Yep. Just yeah, made it was. so simple and easy. Which brings yep. me, which brings me to that. Um, uh, is is uh, are, are are you coming back sometime soon? Because I, 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 if I remember, I think I talked to our our favorite promoter Jason Freeman, and he says something about we're doing some kind of cage deal coming up soon you know anything about that i am i am not sure i haven't spoken to jason in a while i know their their next show is july the 13th uh they're doing a party for big donnie um i don't know maybe maybe it's time to crash his party i'm not sure um <laughs> i don't know yet uh, what the plan is but uh i may end up showing up uh, you never know at the uh, Burke County Fairgrounds, so yeah, I, I think I can't I think, think of a better place to yeah a better place to crash his party than in Burke County. Well, um, I I will I will give the people a little, a little up, and I'll tell you because um, um, uh, you wasn't at the at the last NAWA show, but um, but you know the uh, the Burke County boys are the NAWA tag team champions, but. There is a new tag team on the scene in uh, NAWA, and it's the Gladiators. They they brought in Gladiator number three on that last show. So oh, now, okay. so now, uh, uh, Gladiator number two, uh, you know, Gladiator number one um, has taken a sabbatical, uh, hasn't been around in a while. So Gladiator number two felt like he needed to keep that tag team going. So now there is a Gladiator number three. Um, and that was a, a big shocker to the Burke County boys, although that um, the the Gladiators' plan didn't go as 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 well as they had planned. Uh, unfortunately, the Burke County boys ended up with the tag team titles, but uh, that feud can only get hotter. I believe. I, I think it's going to be a really hot feud for this summer. Oh yeah. Yep. All right, Mr. Jeff. Well, again, thank you for coming on the show. I really appreciate it, and hope to see you soon, my friend. Okay, sounds good, brother. All right, man, we'll talk to you soon. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us for another edition of the Binge Buster Show. And happy 4th of July to every all my listeners out there. Make sure you tune in next week for another edition of the Binge Buster Show. <laughs>